Welcome back to the Love and Dubai show. Our guest today has an inspiring story of courage, determination and hope. She is breast cancer stage two survivor and mum of two who, after facing one of life's biggest challenges, emerged with a newfound appreciation for life. Welcome to the show, Winnie Karaoke. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Not at all. Thank you for coming. You're looking stunning, first of all. Thank you so much. And uh, do tell us a little about yourself and who exactly is Winnie. Okay. Um, so I have been in Dubai for 15 years. Um, I'm Kenyan. I'm married to a Zimbabwean. His name is Leo Mopedzi. I have two kids, boy and a girl, seven years old and two years old. Um, I'm currently working in a retail company. Um, my first job in Dubai was in hospitality, so I've kind of been in a roller coaster of hospitality, aviation, and I'm now into retail. Uh, yeah. And aviation and now retail? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, before retail, I lost my job with aviation through, uh, to COVID. So this is how I ended up landing into the re- retail company. So 15 years in Dubai, two kids. Yes. You have, as we said when we introduced you, a newfound appreciation for life because you went through quite a difficult journey to get here. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about the first time, how did you find out about your breast cancer diagnosis? Okay. Um, four years back. I found cysts on my right breasts. Like any other person, we would say, it's okay, it's normal, it's perfectly fine. However, it didn't feel normal to me because it felt like I had stones on my breasts. So I decided, okay, let me go and get myself checked. Uh, when I went to the clinic, they told me it's nothing alarming. We could just give you some pills to take and it will help the cysts to go down. but I still felt that I needed to do more. However, like anybody else, you would think it's okay. It's, it's normal and we use Google to, to just find things and answers on our own. Until one time I felt something very painful and I was like, okay, now this is not okay. And I decided to go back to the clinic. I met my doctor then. Um, he, she referred me to a surgeon. And I started getting worried because why would she refer me to a surgeon? So I went and met the surgeon and she told me the it's a lump and it's big and it needs to be removed. Like everything happened so fast. Okay, so I made my appointment. Um, it was, I think, a week before that when I went to the clinic. Um, it was, I, I was just not... wanting to go because I was afraid of what I met here, but I kept my head up, head up high. Uh, I did the surgery. They removed the, it was a lymph node. They didn't even, they didn't say it was a lump. They tested the lymph node. Thankfully, it came back negative. There was nothing alarming. And I was supposed to go back for checks every six months. That was in 2019. Um, I think in September, I got pregnant. Because when I went for my surgery, it was a very minor surgery that was in March. Mm -hmm. Then in September, I got pregnant with my second baby. Um, I was given some pills to take and I didn't take them. Because obviously I'm pregnant, I can't just take pills. And just like that, I forgot about it. I let the whole situation go. Um, I went through my pregnancy, I delivered my baby. 2020 came COVID, which changed everything. Um, I lost my job in May, no, in June, right after I delivered my baby. So obviously the checks that I was supposed to do, I never did. Um, 2021, on the right, on the same breast, on the right side, the same part where I had the surgery, I had a a lump growing, like the same feeling I had before I had it, but this time around it wasn't painful. But the previous one was painful. So this one, I was like, okay, it's probably the same thing that happened to me before. So I never really did take much of of awareness, I would say. Um, Plus, I didn't have a job, so I don't have insurance to cover me to go to the hospitals and get myself checked. And I used to tell my husband that this thing feels weird because it kept growing. It's different from what it was before. Like, if I... do like this through my arm, you could see how it was protruding. 
and it wasn't painful and I didn't want to think of the worst. Like it was not even in my wildest dreams to think that it would end up to be something so big. <clears throat> Um, towards the end of this September 2021, I found a job in the retail company. It was part-time and I was lucky enough to get hired full-time. That was in January and this is when I decided, okay, once everything is settled, I need to go back to the hospital and get it checked because it was about a period of one year and a half since the last time I did my surgery and I really didn't go back for checks because obviously after surgery, you need to go for, mm. for follow-ups. I didn't do that. I completely ignored it. <laughs> so, um, May, we traveled for my daughter's second birthday to Zanzibar. And we came back and I told my husband, this is the time that I need to go back to, to, the, uh, to the hospital to do checks. Because then I felt like, no. How long, the, this was post-surgery, another lump had appeared. How long did you have that lump before you went to get that checked? I didn't even, I actually started feeling it after because I was breastfeeding. So did I really, it not affect breastfeeding? No, not at all. But there's days where when I could... I could touch, I would feel the lump, it was, it was very weird, it was, it's big, it's, it's not in shape, it's like things, in, I, don't, I can't even explain it. But the fact that it was very big, when I opened my arm, you can see how it's protruding and it wasn't painful, but I was questioning myself, how come this time around it's not painful and the previous one was painful? Mm -hmm. But I just completely didn't want to know about what was happening to me. Okay, so now I settle down with a job, I have insurance, I make my appointment with my uh, doctor, so I go, I do an ultrasound. I'm telling myself it's going to be fine, it's going to be maybe exactly what happened before, they will tell me it's just a lymph node, we'll remove it, or, and that is exactly what they told me when I did the ultrasound. So you had no idea anywhere that it could potentially be cancerous? Not in my wildest dreams, okay. not. Because, I mean, and this is the stigma that we all have when it comes to cancer. I'm young. We all know that no, it's to own, yeah, to it's us. not going to happen. And it's something that, no, how? It, it cannot. Yeah. I did the ultrasound and then um, the lady told me um, we need to refer you to a mammogram. And uh, what is it called? This mammogram and biopsy. So I did a mammogram first and then... I, they rescheduled me again to do a biopsy. So I came to understand later on, when they tell you to do a biopsy, then you should start worrying. But up until then, I didn't have any worries. Like, it was just like a normal check, like how you'd go to hospital and do checks. I did a mammogram, I went back for the biopsy. It's actually very painful, but thankfully I had anesthesia. But after that, I, I felt the pain. I went with a friend for the biopsy because my husband wasn't around, he's crew, so he's always flying. Um, they called me. They told me, you need to come to the hospital and meet your doctor. Okay. Going for the results, I was alone. First of all, um, my husband wasn't, wasn't around. He was flying and he was an, on a 15 hour flight. And I didn't have anyone who I thought, I didn't want to bother people. <sighs> Like any other woman, you wake up in the morning, you dress up, take selfies, take pictures, you know. I go to the hospital, somehow I was feeling butterflies in my stomach, like I felt I had so much water. But it's okay, it's gonna be fine, there's nothing wrong. Like, I didn't even think of cancer, it didn't even cross my mind. Not even for a single bit. Okay, you go inside, doctor, hi, very friendly, we laughed. And she had the paper with her on the table. And she's like, oh, Winnie, you did a biopsy. And I saw you before. And I told you we were going to remove the, the tumor or the, the lymph node that's on your right breast because it was three centimeters. So they said they had to remove it because it was big. So I knew that's what she was going to tell me. Little did I know <laughs> my world was about to crumble. She didn't bitch about the bush. She just told me there and then, we knew we got the reports and you have cancer. <laughs> okay. 
I laughed. I was like, what do you mean? Like, you must be joking. That's the exact words that I told her. You must be joking. And she just looked at me and she was quiet. I'm sorry. So take your time. Take your time. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I'm looking at her. And she's looking at me and I'm like, no, tell me it's, it's a joke. So I woke up and I was walking from one into another. Like my world was at a standstill. Like I was numb, I didn't know what to do. Like it's cancer. What do you mean cancer? Like it's, it's so surreal at that moment. So it took me about five minutes to actually digest that what she told me. Like, no, it's not real and it's not April Fool's Day. So I sat down and she started talking to me, telling me that I will be cured. The good thing is they found it early. Don't worry. They have a lot of cases and they have a lot of people who actually got cured from it. By that point, it's just so much information coming at me that all that's running through my head is I'm going to die. You know, I have kids, I have a family, I have friends. How do I go past that? Okay. So she asked me if I had anybody who I would call and I couldn't think of anybody at that moment because obviously <laughs> I have to process that I have cancer. Like I was looking, sorry. I called my um, sister-in-law. I told her, are you free? Can you please come to the hospital? And she said, I'm currently doing my hair. I hung up because I didn't want to talk much. So I think she realized something was wrong. So she called me back and she's like, okay, I'm coming. So where else were waiting for her? Because I told the doctor, she, the doctor like, so everything she's telling me at that moment, I would not really understand because mm. she has to tell me like, what's the next steps that we need to follow. Um, so she was just talking. She tried to give me cookies and coffee and anything you could think of, but I, I just couldn't process. And you know, like when someone hits you and all you can hear is, Ding! that's all I could hear. Like I can see her, like she's saying something, but I cannot hear what she's saying because my world is just spinning. Where were your kids at the point? At home. I was alone. <laughs> um, You're very, very strong. I try. Um, so my sister-in-law came, um, so the doctor was explaining the steps that we need to do because obviously now we cannot delay any longer because you never know it can spread. Um, so the next day I was given an appointment with an oncologist. I had no idea who an oncologist was, but I really I had to Google to find out like, what's happening. Um, okay, so now it was time to go home. How do I tell my kids or what do I even tell them? They're going to see me sad. They're going to see me crying. I just didn't know what to do, how to break the news to my family. I got home. I had to call my husband because he knew I was going to get my report. And since he was on a long flight, I didn't want to worry him. So I told him I'm going to have to go and do more tests because um, what they did wasn't enough. They need to do more. But he knows me very well and he could see that I could not even look at him on the camera. Um, but he didn't want to ask like what's happening. <sighs> okay. Um, long story short, I went back. Now things have had to, had to start moving so fast. So I had to do scans, I had to do brain MRIs, I had to do heart MRIs, I had to do a PET scan. A PET scan is to see if it's spread anywhere else of the body. And that was very scary because then if it comes back positive, God forbid, that would change the whole, the whole treatment. Um, so when I went for the appointment with the oncologist, I took my sister-in-law with me. Uh, one thing to anybody who will have to face this, don't go alone because it's a lot of information. It's a lot to fill in and to process. Um, so better, it's good to have someone, like a, a second second year. Um, now I'm there with the oncologist and he's explaining to me the treatments that I have to go through. Chemotherapy, um, surgery, and radiotherapy. And as he speaks, <laughs> I feel it's like, because these things, I'm 
we only know them through the movies. We only know them through TV shows. You're telling me I'm going to go through chemotherapy. Like, no, this is things that I know I watch on TV only. How is that going to happen? And he told me all oh, the side effects of loss of hair, um, maybe loss of weight, maybe adding weight. Like, there's lots, lots and lots of effects. <sighs> and I had to come to terms with what I'm about to face and the battle I'm about to to go through and had to find strength. It's so normal for anyone you know, yeah. gets this news to just completely uh, you know, like go into a shell and just not be able to process anything because yeah. like you said, it changes your whole world. Yeah. How did you muster the courage to keep going with this treatment and this journey? At any point where you just like, you know, did. At any point you were like, were you just, you know, like, okay, we need to stop. Like, I can't do this anymore. How did you persist? I really, really had a lot of those moments. And as much as we are so pressured into being positive, we're still allowed to have those negative thoughts. But don't let those negative thoughts control how you live, because if then you do, you're going to go down. Um, I found my strength in speaking up. Um, but right before that, before I could actually process it, it took me so much time to to actually believe that I have cancer. I would go to the mirror, look at myself. Like, is this really happening? I would even slap myself, talk talk to myself on the mirror like I'm crazy. Like, no, it's not. It's not real. Um, my way of overcoming it is when I started the chemo. It doesn't affect you immediately. It takes about one or two days and when that happens like the first chemo i was listening so much to my body because this is a very big change it's it's, it's a, an aggressive treatment and it's so much that's going on your body um so what i used to do is if i feel my body is okay i would go to work most of my chemo sessions i always used to show up at work because the more i'm at home the more I am thinking, the more it's really taking me down, I would cover myself under my sheets and I would just cry. I would go to the bathroom and I would just cry. And I came to realize, it's like when you have a cold, the more you just put yourself in a corner or in that shell that you talk about, the more it makes you sick. So my way of overcoming is to go to work, to see my coworkers who have been very supportive Lot, a lot of the days is when I would have meltdowns. I would just walk off the floor, go to the bathroom, cry myself out. I would call a friend to just be there with me, to just comfort me and tell me it's going to be okay. Let it all out and I would get up and I would go and I would face my customers. And I love my job because we, we interact with people and we connect with people. So there's just those particular individuals where you have conversations and you, like, the way you engage, you have a, a connection. And I have had a few customers that I would speak to and I would end up telling them my stories. And this is why I say um, it's, it's very powerful for us to speak. It's not for everybody. You might just find one individual who you feel you can speak to, who you feel comfortable and safe to. But my, it, was, it was my kind of therapy to talk to people. A lot of people told me, Winnie, you need therapy, you need someone to talk to. But my therapy was speaking up to people, but also I would choose who I'm talking to. And I remember this one customer who I, we really had a very, very good conversation. And I spoke to her. There were two ladies. And I ended up telling them that what I'm going through. Um, and you never really know who you meet. The one lady, the mother had cancer, breast cancer. And the moment I told her I had cancer, she looked at me and she's like, oh, you, you still have nails. Because the mom, her nails would fall off from the chemo. So then you see, like, to hear other people's stories and to see what you're going through and what other people are going through, you're not alone. And this is why I feel we need to speak up, we need to change this stigma that goes around because ex hearing and experiencing what 
other people are going through, it kind of makes you feel a little bit better about yourself. It's very challenging. It's, it drains you emotionally, physically, spiritually. It takes all of you. And my courage and strength also comes from my kids, my family, because there's so much that's ahead of you and you should not let cancer take you down. And there's moments where I felt like I wanted to give up. On my fourth chemo session, there's a moment where I felt like I can't do this. My husband, my husband wasn't around. My kids were sleeping and I was left alone in the dining. And I'm just thinking to myself, why do I have to suffer like this? I'm just sick of being sick. I'm tired of being tired. But is this how I want to end my life? Like, no, I have to fight. You really, really have to fight. It is so hard. It is really, really hard, but as an individual, we have a purpose in life. We, we are all here for a purpose. You might not have already seen your purpose now, but there's so much more to life that you, than you can think of. Like there's so much that life has to offer and you have to look at the brighter side and know that there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Six sessions of chemotherapy, it felt wow. like six years. I didn't think I would go through six sessions of chemo. How? But somehow I did. And you've come out um, the other side. Yeah. I just recently had surgery. As we speak at the moment, I'm still on recovery. It's been two weeks now. And I'm going to start radiotherapy um, on the 19th. But I just want to let people know out there, all the warriors who are going through cancer, there is hope beyond what you can see. Me sitting here right now, the weenie that I know now, or that I know months back, would not be sitting here right now. I would not be here speaking about this. I was very naive. I was a very quiet person. I would not talk to people. But seeing what life has or what life has offered me, we should appreciate life. The moment you wake up in the morning and you're healthy, you're able to vent for yourself because sitting in that bed, I'm a very active person and seeing myself lying down there, helpless, hopeless, I didn't want that for me. And this is why I kept on fighting because there's so much ahead of me. There's so much that life has to offer. And we just need to fight. And this is very powerful. What, what you feed your mind is very powerful. If you feed your mind the negatives, you will always face the negatives. But if you feed your mind the positives, you will always feed the positives. So you have to, you are your own control. You are, you are, you are your own person. You're the only one who can, can navigate how you want your life. Nobody will. The support you get is also very powerful because you need that. You need that support. And the support I have had from my coworkers, my family, my husband, he's been amazing. To have a spouse who will be. I'm sorry. <laughs> to have a spouse who will be there for you from, he has seen it all. He has seen all the struggles I have been through. He comes from long hour flights. He has had no sleep, but he will make sure that he's there with me on that chemo session. He You're wants to. to <laughs> um, what you shared with us today uh -huh. has been so inspiring. And can I just say uh -huh. thank you for being so honest. Um, and giving people such a very real look at what it's like to be diagnosed mm -hmm. and to like, because we, we, we talk about uh, these types of stories, but like to actually understand what it was like going through that yeah. has been incredible. And to see you here today saying that you're a changed person because of it. Um, just thank you for sharing your story mm -hmm. so much. Um, unfortunately, we don't have much more no, time. That's fine, yeah. But 
you have been incredible um, and your story is amazing. And thank you for kind of supporting others and trying to raise awareness because yeah. you said you wouldn't have done that before. Yeah. Um, and can people get in touch with you? If, yes, if anyone's course, watching this touch by today's story, yeah. which I'm sure people will be, mm -hmm. how can they find you? Um, I have my social media platform, which is which Winnie Foyer. If possible, um, you can just tag the name and they will be able to reach me there anytime. And this is one of the, one of the, platforms that have actually helped me because I have had a lot of cancer patients who have also been following and mm. have, I have had a lot of cancer hacks like we communicate and we tell each other like what we're going through and the best ways of how to move or past what we are going through and just even them telling me what they are going through and what I'm going through we kind of come together and we give each other ideas on how to navigate through the whole battle. Which is so important, I think, when you... It is really, really when important. When you're Googling. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really important. Thank you so much for being so vulnerable with us and so candid. Thank you. Because a lot of people want to come out, but they don't come out and they feel hesitant and they have questions, they don't know who to ask. Yeah. So thank you for sharing and thank you for, you know, like just inviting people over to ask these questions to yeah. you and helping them Makes out. Sense. But guys, that's all for today. Mm -hmm. uh, catch us same time, same place tomorrow. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.